subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Working, traveling, or playing on the water is a way of life for Alaskans. But Alaska's cold water and harsh conditions can quickly turn any boating trip into a life-threatening emergency. Unlike marine mammals with their natural insulation and buoyancy, humans can't survive in Alaska's water without additional flotation and protection from the cold. Immersion suits are designed to provide the flotation and insulation a person's life depends on in a cold water emergency. Immersion suits, sometimes called survival suits, have been around for a long time. Today, there are a wide variety of sizes and designs available. There is no best brand of immersion suit. All should meet United States Coast Guard standards and have a label inside indicating Coast Guard approval. Having a Coast Guard approved immersion suit on board is just the first step. For an immersion suit to protect you in the water, it must fit correctly, be properly maintained, and be stored in an accessible location. You must also practice putting on your immersion suit quickly to make sure you can do so in an emergency. Commercial fishing vessels operating in cold waters are required to have an immersion suit of the proper size for each individual on board. The only way to find your correct size is to try on an immersion suit. Make sure it'll fit over the clothes that you typically wear on deck. Check to make sure the hood seals around your face, that your hands fit into the gloves, and that the suit will not ride up over your head. If it does, large amounts of water can enter through the hood, decreasing your chances for survival. If you are a between-sized person, try another brand of suit. One brand may be cut too large for you, while another brand may fit perfectly. In an emergency, you must be able to identify the correct size of immersion suit quickly. If there are different sizes of suits on board, mark them with easily recognized objects such as a whistle, a light, or some additional reflective tape. This will aid in quick identification, especially at night. Hey, Pat, how are you doing? Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? Well, pretty good. Uh, broke the zipper on my suit, so I guess I need to get another suit for this trip. Uh, well, you bet. We got them right here. It's, uh, it's a when buying a new immersion suit, take a moment to examine the features and make sure it fits you. All immersion suits have a waterproof zipper. This is one of the most important features of the suit. Take a moment to make sure the zipper works smoothly and has a handle that is easy to grab. Immersion suits come with a wide variety of gloves to suit individual preferences. Three or five finger gloves are common but may be difficult to work in. Removable gloves provide the most dexterity but they are difficult to keep watertight and often cause your hands to get cold quickly. Try out different gloves to determine which type best meets your needs. Pockets for lights and other survival gear are an important feature on an immersion suit. On some brands, you can add pockets which zip into the flotation collar or slide over the arm. All immersion suits have a face flap that protects your nose and mouth. Some have Velcro attached to the back of the face flap to hold it open while donning the suit. Many immersion suits also have one-way exhaust valves built into the legs. These valves are designed to let air out without letting water in. They're intended to prevent trapped air from causing a person to float head down in the water. To be Coast Guard approved, an immersion suit must include the following items. It must have 62 square inches of retro-reflective tape placed so it can be seen when a person is floating in the water. It must have a light with a dated battery. It must have a pillow or a collar that provides additional flotation. This additional flotation is very important in rough seas. The flotation collar is inflated by pressing down on the tip of the hose with your mouth and blowing air into it. When the tip is released, the valve closes and air can't escape. Make sure the tip of the hose moves freely without sticking. If the hose has a locking nut, 
Make sure it is always set in the open or down position. Finally, Coast Guard regulations require immersion suits to be marked with the name of the vessel or the owner of the suit. Ask your immersion suit manufacturer for the type of marking ink they recommend. Immersion suits should be inspected at least once each month. If properly maintained, they will last many years. The zipper on an immersion suit should receive careful attention during each inspection. Green on the zipper is a sign of corrosion. To remove corrosion, try cleaning the zipper with a toothbrush and a slurry of baking soda and water. Rinse with fresh water. If any green is still present, repeat the process. If this doesn't remove all the corrosion, immediately remove the suit from service and send to a factory authorized facility for repair. Immersion suit zippers need to be regularly lubricated with a non-petroleum lubricant recommended by the manufacturer. Spread the lubricant on all sides of the zipper. Be sure and lubricate the locking teeth on the back of the zipper. Slide the zipper up and down a few times to spread the lubricant evenly. Don't forget to lubricate the snaps on the stowage bag to assure easy access to your suit when you need it. Inspect the suit for holes, rips, burns, and greaser oil. Carefully inspect the seams for leaks in the hands, crotch, and other areas. Repair any damaged seams with a sealant recommended by the manufacturer. Pull gently on the inflation hose to make sure it is not loose. At least once a year, inflate the flotation collar to make sure that it will hold air overnight. Check the light for any sign of corrosion. Make sure to use dated batteries and replace any that are expired or soon to expire. Test the light. Inspect the retro reflective tape. Yellow tape should be replaced. After using a suit in a swimming pool or in salt water, rinse it thoroughly with fresh water. It is best to dry your immersion suit in a well ventilated area, out of the weather and out of the sun. To prevent destructive mold and mildew, it is important to dry both the inside and the outside of the suit. In the off-season, remove your immersion suit from the bag and store it indoors. This will keep the suit dry and allow the neoprene material to maintain its loft. It is highly recommended that suits be inspected once a year by an authorized service facility. Immersion suits must be stowed in an accessible location out of the weather. Look around your vessel and find the best place with ready access in all kinds of emergencies. The zipper should be stored in the open position with the zipper about an inch up from the bottom. This will allow the suit to be quickly donned in an emergency and give you room to work the zipper down if it jams. Put plastic bags in the suit so it will be easier to get your feet in quickly with boots or shoes on. Most suits should be rolled, not folded. Roll the suit up beginning at the feet and moving up the legs. Be sure the face flap is left open, either inside the hood or attached outside to the hood on the pad provided with some brands of suits. Roll the hood over the body of the suit, fold the arms across, slide the suit into the bag, and snap the bag shut. A slightly different method is used for Bailey's immersion suits. Bailey's recommends their suit be folded along the line of the zipper, fold the suit into thirds, and place the suit inside the Bailey immersion suit bag. Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! This is just a drill. Get your suits. In an emergency, seconds can make the difference between life and death. Mayday, mayday, Practice mayday. the steps to correctly don an immersion suit before you leave the dock. Everyone on board should be able to don their immersion suit in less than 60 seconds. I got the lid. Yeah, I got the suit. Remove the immersion suit with a quick downward shake of the bag. If the snaps have been well maintained, they should open easily. Roll the suit out on the deck and sit down on the chest area near the head. Sitting on the suit makes you much more stable and eliminates the chance of falling and injuring yourself if the vessel moves suddenly or rolls. Put your feet in and slide them all the way to the bottom of the legs. Placing plastic bags over your boots helps your feet slip into the legs much faster 
and allows you to keep your boots on. The bags can be stored in the legs of the suit or in the hood for easy access. Be aware that some brands of immersion suits have tapered legs and require boots or shoes to be removed before donning the suit. Once your feet are in the bottom of the immersion suit legs, kneel or stand and bring the suit over your back. Put your weaker arm in first. If you're right-handed, put your left arm in the left sleeve. With your right hand, secure the hood over your head. Without the hood securely in place, you can drown or be washed out of your suit in rough seas. Sweatshirt hoods and hats can interfere with the immersion suit hood. Tuck your sweatshirt hood into your collar before donning. Remove your hat before putting the immersion suit hood on. If you wear eyeglasses, consider placing them in your shirt pocket or inside the suit to prevent loss or injury. Finally, place your right hand into the right sleeve. Make sure the zipper is clear. With one hand, hold the bottom of the zipper down and grab the toggle with the other hand. Arch your back and zip the suit all the way up. If any snags are felt, do not force them. Instead, lower the zipper to clear the snag and try again. A long, steady pull is more effective than stopping and starting. Pull the face flap across the top of the zipper and fasten in place. With practice, immersion suit donning can be accomplished with speed and efficiency. Once you are in your immersion suit, turn to help others. Working together, two people can quickly help a third person get into their immersion suit by the following technique. Have the suit open on deck and ready for the person. Place plastic bags on the person's feet and guide them into the suit. Once their legs are fully in the suit, have the person roll onto their knees, guide their arms into the suit, and place the hood securely on their head. Hold the bottom of the zipper down with one hand, grasp the toggle, and zip the immersion suit closed with the other hand. With practice, immersion suits can be done in this manner in less than 20 seconds. You should abandon ship only after determining that being on board the vessel is more dangerous than being in the water. Always enter the water slowly and from the lowest point possible. This allows the body to adjust to the new water environment and minimizes the chance of injury. On some vessels, easing yourself slowly into the water is not an option. If you must jump, make sure the flotation collar is deflated. This will prevent injury to your neck and back or damage to the suit. Stand next to the side of the vessel, face the bow or the stern. Protect your head from hitting the side of the vessel by covering it with your inboard arm. This will also prevent the immersion suit hood from slipping off when you enter the water. Use your remaining hand to create an opening at the neck that will allow air to escape as you enter the water. This will prevent your eardrums from being damaged or ruptured. With the hand of the outboard arm, protect the airway to help keep water out during an involuntary gasp. Look over the side to ensure the area is clear. Step sideways off the vessel, crossing your ankles to prevent straddling unseen objects in the water. Once in the water, float on your back. The immersion suit's pillow or a flotation collar helps you maintain this position. Forming a human chain while swimming allows you to move faster, stay together, and creates a bigger target for rescuers to see. Three or more people can form a human raft. This technique not only creates a bigger target for rescuers, it allows the group to support someone in worse condition and keep them out of the water. When trying to attract the attention of nearby rescuers, you can also lock elbows shoulder to shoulder and kick your feet. The splashing will significantly increase your visibility, especially on a calm day. You never know how your day is going to end. Immersion suits have saved thousands of lives, but an immersion suit will work only if it is properly sized, donned, maintained, stowed, and used the right way. When an emergency happens on board a vessel, seconds count.